Good afternoon. Welcome to Edusat Network. Friend, as you know, we are discussing wireless network. In the last lecture, we tried to understand the basic nuances of wireless network, uh, starting from fixed to the ad hoc networks, and what is the uh, major things involved in this, and how, how you can best use your the wireless network. And we will move further and we will try to understand vehicular ad hoc networks. And for discussion of this great topic, we have in the studio the same resource person, Dr. D.K. Lovial. He is a associate professor in Jawaharlal Nehru University and has uh, published many articles on this very issue. So I think his knowledge and experience will help us to understand the uh, uh, wireless network and will give an insight. So on your behalf, I welcome him for the research lecture. Welcome, Mr. Um, thank you, Manindji. Uh, hello, friends. Good afternoon. And yesterday, uh, we talked about various kinds of uh, wireless network. And in that category, uh, those who have attended the lecture yesterday uh, may recall that we talked on especially a wireless sensor network. And if you uh, remember the category of ad hoc networks, one side we put it wireless internet, and second we said wireless sensor network, and third we talk about a vehicular ad hoc networks. Yesterday lecture was on wireless sensor network, and today we will move to another category of wireless network, that is vehicular ad hoc network. And the primary aim of this lecture is to give an introduction what a vehicular ad hoc network is to the new uh, listeners as well as those who are interested as, as I said yesterday that uh, there are certain research issues and this is a new upcoming areas and the undergraduate students as well as postgraduate student those who are willing to go ahead for the higher education and wants to follow their research in the area probably it may be useful for them as well. So my focus is divided in two categories one is to give the basic fundamentals and other is to give little insight into what are the open research areas where people can go ahead with. So now let us begin with vacular ad hoc network and the topics I acknowledge probably because some of the slides probably especially uh, figures might, might have taken from uh, some other places. So I acknowledge all of, all of them and my topics which I am going to uh, cover today is uh, because see what motivated for this kind of uh, networks that is what the motivation mean. And then I will put basic introduction of what vehicular ad hoc network is. And since it falls under the category of mobile ad hoc networks or ad hoc networks, therefore, the difference is very important to tell you that what is the difference between vehicular ad hoc network and mobile ad hoc networks. And then we will go on certain issues and challenges of this kind of networks. Then we may be discussing certain applications of it. And finally, some open research area and last topic which I have mentioned in this, I will not be covering here right now. That is what my primary focus is. Now, if those who have been working or studied computer network might be knowing very well that most of the network research evolution has started from uh, Department of Defense in US because the, the research begins with the need of the hour because all military applications, they need quick decision making and some surveillance at times and as well as uh, monitoring of certain area that is the wireless sensor network came in and even entire computer network arises from the needs of the military that is what US Department of Defense begin with. Now, but here little deviation now this kind of network vehicular ad hoc network it has a different origin if you look at this and if you look at the millions of the people around the world die every year because of the vehicular traffic accidents. And you will be surprised there is exponential growth in the number of vehicles that are moving in the city. If you take ca case of Delhi which is a metropolitan city and if you look at the carelessness driving in the roads and every day you may be listening about the accident taking place and the violation of traffic rules by various drivers and there is a congestion on the roads because of the road, road sites are not increasing as the vehicular traffic on the roads is increasing. The ratio is quite skewed and the rates, road safety is the major issue in current scenario than how to save lives on the roads. That is very, very important. And see, accordingly, if you look at the World Health Organization data, the millions of people around the world is dying everywhere because this, but fourth, it says one fourth of all the death caused by injury is because of this road accident. And in addition to that, about 50 million of people 
are injured in vehicular traffic every year in accidents around the world. And that is a large number which needs a really safety precautions to be taken. And therefore, that is what has motivated the research in the area of vehicular ad hoc network. Now, if you look at this, uh, uh, there is a diagram which says sometimes we get stuck in traffic jam and there is a parking problem where to park your vehicle. And if you move around and sometimes in the metropolitan cities like Delhi and probably Mumbai, Calcutta, Bangalore as well and we look for a parking space and then we move to the, to the parking space then we do not find a space. Then we have to move around and see where can I park my vehicle. And therefore, if I get a real time information that okay, so and so parking space is full therefore, you cannot go to that parking space and then probably I can take measures that where to move and which are the other parking spaces available. So, that is where uh, it is very important if I get this information real time information that the parking space is available or not then probably I may take a quick decision where to go and timely decision to look for alternative parking spaces. And therefore, the vehicular network becomes very very important and this is a big motivation factor which has revolutionized the, 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 the vehicular uh, what you call industry. And, and before I go uh, to what uh, the network is, the important point here we are trying to make is lot of uh, 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 what you call manufacturing car maintenance company are working in this area. If you look at BMW, BMW already working on how to provide the cars with such facilities where uh, warning messages can be timely delivered through wireless mode and so GM, um, BMW, GM and other other motor companies are also working on that. This is a big research area coming up as well as it may be useful as high an application very useful for the public. Now, before I go in that detail yesterday I covered I will repeat this portion that what ad hoc network is. And since vehicular ad hoc network fall in the true category of ad hoc network therefore, the definition of ad hoc network becomes important here. Now, what I said is ad hoc network is a collection of wireless mobile hosts forming a temporary network without an aid of any established infrastructure or centralized administration. This I explained yesterday and I will repeat it that means, you have certain nodes which have a wireless capability for communication and the nodes may be meant for some applications, but with the help of wireless communication abilities they will communicate with each other. And these nodes as I said yesterday working both as a router as well as nodes. So, therefore, this topology is temporary and ad hoc that is why the network are called ad hoc. And if you look at vehicular ad hoc networks and the vehicles which are moving on the roads they form a network temporary network and they all are enabled with wireless facility that is what we assume and that has to be to make a vehicular ad hoc network. And second assumption is sometimes we assume that the location information of a vehicle is very very important and therefore, on the vehicles the GPS system may be very very important to be installed on and probably though it will increase the cost of a vehicle, but it is important is much more than the cost at times. So, the vehicular ad hoc network the vehicles are mobile all the time and sometimes it are park and therefore, when it, they are park probably you do not need any information much unless there is a burglary taken uh, takes place. Otherwise, while you are on the road on the vehicle you need to communicate and they are on move therefore, the topology will keep on changing. So, it is pure temporary with pure temporary uh, what you call topology and therefore, it reflects a true ad hoc network. Now, there is no central uh, it is not a possibility of a central administration because the vehicles are on the roads and they keep on moving. So, you cannot have a central facility which controls every vehicle that means, what I am trying to focus here is that uh, they will be uh, communicating with each other. But look at this diagram of uh, what we call ad hoc network if you have laptops yesterday I could not show this diagram and today if you look at this we have a set of laptops here and these set of laptops are communicating with each other. And if you look at this, the, the lines I have drawn in between, there are line between two laptops on the right hand side and there is a line between at the below between two laptops and there is a line between at the left corner between two laptops. That means, the line shows that these laptops can communicate directly with each other whereas, there is no straight line directly between two laptops they cannot communicate directly. 
that means they have to take help of the other laptops in between and you can take scenario that these laptops could also be in place of these laptops we can also have vehicles now and then we said what are the needs for this kind of systems if you look at this uh, in vacuum ad hoc network especially we need low latency information that means the delay between the transmission of information must be as low as possible because we would definitely like to disseminate and transmit this message timely say for example two vehicles have a collision on the road ahead and the remaining vehicles has to be informed about this following the vehicles so that they can avoid the accident therefore the message of accident that is the information has been collected of accident and the vehicle must transmit this information as quickly as possible to the vehicle following it therefore they can take an timely action if there is a delay latency is high that means delay is high the information will take more time and therefore the vehicles following them and the driver sitting in that vehicle cannot take probably an immediate action and therefore cannot avoid the accidents therefore it becomes very very important for vehicular ad hoc networks that the latency should be very low but in normal case of an ad hoc network probably this may not be a very stringent or very strict condition to be put on and that is where the vehicular network is also different from normal ad hoc networks and look at the second is the localized data collection and and, and dissemination that means the vehicles must keep on collecting the information local information wherever they are this may be their location information this may be the vehicles moving around them may be important because sometimes the the speed of a vehicle is also governed by the vehicles moving around it because some vehicles in the right and left or ahead is moving at a particular speed therefore the speed of my vehicle following it could not be very high so it is also being governed by the relative speed of the vehicles around it so therefore uh, this information may be collected by a vehicle so that this information can be disseminated and transmitted to the remaining vehicles following it and they can take immediate action so collection of localized data and dissemination is one of the facility or application required on a vehicle and the third is the low cost in deployment maintenance if you say that this cost of the hardware and software applications is very high then possibly we may not able to the cost of the car will increase therefore we cannot afford to have it so the deployment of these instrument on the vehicle should be a low cost as well as the maintenance of the, the equipment should at be at low cost so that it can be very very useful device and therefore now the question is what are the possible solutions for this one of the solution is a cellular network that means what we are referring to is the mobile the network which you are using for your communication calling that is called cellular network which i explained yesterday what a cell mean and how this mobile network works because we we said that there is a base station a tower to which your mobile is communicating and mostly your mobile communicates to a tower which is nearby nearby may have a two meaning probably most of the time when i say nearby it is taken in terms of the distance but it may not necessarily be the absolute distance sometimes or most of the times rather i'll call it it depends on the signal strength that means if a mobile tower is sending a signal how much power my mobile is receiving from that signal that is the determining factor whether i am able i will be able to communicate to the base station nearby or not probably a station a base a tower may be very nearby my mobile where i am now but its signal strength is very low whereas some tower at little more distance may have uh, been uh, transmitting with the power which i am receiving with higher power so now my mobile will be connected to a, a tower which is sending me or which power from which i am receiving more power that will be more useful or uh, uh, that is the logic which is followed generally so the signal strength what i am referring to is the signal strength is more important than the physical distance uh, that meaning by some station at nearby may have a weak signal strength even if some station little more away may have more signal strength and uh, because as i said yesterday if somebody asked me a question that uh, why my mobile is or not uh, the wireless is not picking up the signal i said sometimes the vegetation or other obstruction in the area weakens the signal 
So, even if it is a, at, at a shorter distance, but the signal are weak because there are lot more obstacles whereas, the tower which is a little far away distance have lower number of or have less obstacles on the way. So, therefore, the signal strength is not only governed by the distance, it is also being governed by the obstacles occurring in the middle or in the path that is important. So, that is what I said the existing cellular network could be one of the possibility to be used for communication among the vehicles. Why? Because they already exist otherwise you have to have a separate network or all devices has to be equipped with which probably may increase the cost. But the question is, is that enough to provide a solution and the answer to this question is no, right and that I will come. Other is that the satellite that means, we have set communication satellites could these satellites be used for transmission of messages among these vehicles that could be other possibility and third is you should have a separate network of vehicles through which they may be communicating. Now, when I talk of these three solutions, look at the first solution where I said you have a existing cellular network and the moment I said existing cellular network, one of the uh, region is the bandwidth used in cellular network is not enough because and this is high cost and the question may arise and the basic student who have uh, not done a basic course or done a basic course may always ask this question why the bandwidth of cell, uh, cellular network is low and why the cost is high. One of the reason is because the cellular networks are designed basically for uh, voice communication that means, we can talk with each other and please keep one thing in mind which I like to explain to the students that there is a different requirement for a voice network and there is a different requirement for a data network. Data network means where we are sending text, video, etc and voice network means where we are talking on phone like this. Now, the voice network has retirement the requirement is it needs a low bandwidth and because when we talk, we talk for a very short period and we talk limited and therefore, the bandwidth required is the amount of data we generate from this voice is low in amount and therefore, the 4 kilohertz is sufficient for transmission of the voice. And a second is the most important requirement for voice network is the delay is much is, is you need a low delay that if there is a high delay, we may not be able to listen the voice. Say for example, right now if I am talking from here, if you if there is a delay of transmission in my voice, probably you may not be able to connect what I said first sentence and, and the second sentence will come after long delay, then you probably may not be able to connect them. And second is there is a jitter, jitter means there may be the variation in the delay that means, the first two if I put in very layman terms when I talk the first signal or first sentence comes in a I will put center I will use word signal or sentence though they may not be used interchangeably, but for understanding sake of the students. Then the second sentence may be uh, uh, sent after certain delay and then next may be again not the same delay, but different delay. So, there is a variation in the delay that is what we call jitter and that also makes the communication very, very difficult though probably would have used VOIP voice over IP can uh, realize it and can remember it that how difficult it to make out at times because there is a uh, you hear a broken voice. The reason is there is a delay and there is a jitter between the different signal or sentences or different voices which you get at times and that makes it difficult to understand and to connect them and to put them together. So, that is because of the delay and jitter and voice network when I put that voice over IP that is working the internet and which has been designed for data network and therefore, it becomes very, very difficult to be used it for voice communication. And since cellular networks are basically or primarily designed for uh, voice communication, therefore, the bandwidth is low one and because the voice network requires low bandwidth. And second is and you may put a question that why not much more bandwidth as a servant of the requirement, but at the same time it also cost if you put more bandwidth you are going to pay more. What does it mean? While two people are communicating on a channel and then the moment I am talking of communicating, I am talking of voice communication and the fundamental region is why I am talking on a phone and the channel allocated for this transmission is a dedicated channel. The region if it is not dedicated, if it is shared while my data is being sent, somebody else will send therefore, I only once day, uh, either my data can be sent on that channel or somebody else data can be sent on that channel. Then that is sharing, 
when you have a sharing mode then there the delay may occur because my data is being transmitted therefore you have to wait you cannot send at the same time that is will cause delay for you because first my data is being transmitted or my voice is being transmitted then your voice will be transmitted and there will be a delay as i said delay in voice network cannot be tolerated and therefore the only reason i should have a separate channel for communication and you should have a separate channel for communication now when we have separate channels where i send i take a pause the moment i take a pause no data or no voice is being transmitted so humans when talk we definitely take a pause in between so therefore during that period of a pause the channel is not being utilized but you have to pay for it because it is dedicated for you so now the question is since channels are dedicated for voice communication therefore the cost is high and if you share it it will incur the delay and therefore you will not get the quality of service so there is a trade off and to give a good quality voice communication the voice networks are does not support delay therefore they use dedicated channels and therefore they cost high so if you put more bandwidth and that is dedicated to you and you may not use at times because when you take pause the channel is not not being utilized but you are paying for it the cost will increase therefore the low bandwidth is used and now whereas in the data network the channels are shared because the delay does not matter if today for example i give an example if i am sending my email and first the data of my email is being transmitted and the moment there is a, a gap and the channel can be used for transmitting of your email so they are being shared even if the email and gets a little delayed that does not make any difference because uh, we don't have a real time communication so keeping that in mind what i am saying is the requirement of a data network delay can be tolerated bandwidth may be required of variable length sometimes i may be sending a file which requires a large bandwidth sometimes i may be sending uh, emails which require short bandwidth so the bandwidth required for data network may be of varying capacity where for voice network is a constant because 4k everybody will almost send the same amount of data while talking on a telephone so therefore the cellular network are designed for this cannot work for a data network and what i am pushing preferring it is the vehicular ad hoc network can be seen as a data network so therefore the cellular network does not fit in that then the question of satellite network we have existing satellite network you can say the vehicles can use these satellite networks to communicate among themselves but the cost will be high even if you today you look at the satellite phones are costly and therefore they are not very popular not many people use it and we simply use uh, the cellular networks why one is the cost the second problem with the cell, uh, satellite network is the delay is high as i said if you remember if you take a satellite at geosynchronous orbit i repeat it that means what i said is the satellites uh, orbiting Uh, at a, a distance uh, 36000 kilometers around where the relative speed of a satellite will be same as the speed of the earth so therefore the satellite will keep on focusing at a given particular point and even if the satellite is at low height then even it will be in few kilometers and that will take a longer time for communication so the delay will be more therefore cost and delay in satellite network uh, is high therefore that cannot be suitable for communication between vehicles why i just said the latency has to be low for vehicular network for immediate transmission of messages because there are warning messages there are alert messages to be transmitted at times the vehicular network can also be used for entertainment you may be watching a movie sitting on your car if the driver is not watching somebody sitting on the back can watch a movie downloading from some video server and therefore it may lead a good or streaming video streaming and therefore it will need a good it will not tolerate delay now keeping those things in mind the cost and delay the cellular network and satellite network existing could not be useful for vehicular ad hoc network therefore the choice is a separate network has to be established that means either all vehicles has to be enabled with the wireless capability as well as other applications running capabilities so we will focus on the separate vehicular ad hoc network to be used for vehicular communication now look at this scenario what i said introduction a vehicle has to be enabled with certain devices for communication so what it needs is it needs that it records events so that whatever event it has to uh, sense it has to record it that is what called event recorder then it should have a global positioning system enabled on it on the right side then it should have a communication facility so that it can communicate to the next vehicle 
and there should be some display where it can be seen that what are the activities going on and then you may have some computing platform say some processors and a rear radars which can also takes information about the uh, about uh, the nearby vehicles and so and so forth it could be even cameras put around which takes information collect information about the various uh, vehicles around so that this collected information by the event data recorder could be transmitted to the next vehicles through the communication facilities enabled in this vehicle now gps receiver at times may be optional but because you may be willing to have the position information of a vehicle then have a gps recorder if you don't want to have this it may not be but if it is always preferable that there should be now and therefore what we define as a vehicle and network is it is simply an ad hoc network and the, the question is it is formed by in an ad hoc mode by the collection of vehicles that is why it is called vehicular ad hoc network now you could see this diagram what we are seeing is there are vehicles if you look at the uh, rightmost vehicle and we have uh, drawn a circle that means the vehicle if this vehicle trans uh, transmits some data this can be heard by any vehicle which is, which exists within this circle if the other vehicle is not within this circle it cannot hear the communication so again if you look at the rightmost vehicle and a leftmost vehicle then what you see is the, if the leftmost vehicle is communicating with the rightmost then it has to take the vehicles existing in the middle their help now to take their help that means the vehicle in the middle is working as a as a router basically to transmit or forwarder to transmit the data coming from the leftmost and then forwarding to the rightmost now this is the typical scenario of a, a vehicular ad hoc network now here if you look at what we are saying is we have vehicles moving on the road and and then two vehicles may be straight away communicating with each other now this if you look at uh, what i am trying to say is uh, two vehicles are communicating with each other and that is if you look at the leftmost we said inter vehicle communication that means two vehicles two cars moving on the road are communicating with each other directly but at times there may not be the the a vehicle existing in between which can work as a route then how the communication takes place and the important point is the vehicular communication is also being governed by the 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 geographic location of the streets and the roads if you look at the scenario sometimes in a highway the vehicles may be moving in a linear way that means one vehicle is following other and so and so forth they are moving in a straight line but that may not be the case when the vehicles move in a city scenario where they may not be following in a linear manner and following in a queue each other which happens in a in a highway here the vehicles move in a random way in sometimes even the drivers don't follow the rules then somebody may be trying to push his car into in between some cars even if there is less space and that that means what we are trying to say is in a urban environment cities metropolitan cities like delhi you can find that the movement of the cars is more random and then difficult more difficult to control whereas the scenario of a highway is more straight because they are moving in a in in a row and the first vehicle has to communicate either to the vehicle uh, ahead it or the vehicle following it and that becomes a senior linear uh, line communication in a linear line you are communicating with each other but that is not the case in a city scenario now but at times what you could see is in a road when vehicles are moving there may be a big gap between two moving vehicles that means one vehicle is away and the other is that far away and therefore they cannot directly communicate with each other that means there is no vehicle existing between these two vehicles which can work as a route now in that case the communication between two vehicles will be broken and therefore the idea suggested here is there should be some towers which you call base station or great gateway towers may be established or installed alongside the roads which can be useful in that scenario when there is a absence of vehicles for to be used for uh, working as a router or intermediate vehicle to make communication between two vehicles so now we have two scenario one is the vehicle to vehicle communication other is a vehicle is communicating with a roadside unit now taking two two scenario and here if you look at 
we have a cluster here now on left hand side we have a dotted or dashed circle which shows there is a cluster of vehicles in between and if you look at the right top there is again under dashed circle which shows there are vehicles which makes a cluster and communicating with each other and these vehicles are also communicating with the towers which call base station gateway at the corner of these circles so that two vehicles which are outside these circles can communicate with the help of these towers. So, the roadside units are equally important to have a vehicular ad hoc network. Now, the system architecture of this network is, I have written here, V double uh, this uh, looks like 7, this means V 2, this refers to V 2. Now, we have a roadside unit in the middle RAC means roadside unit, that means a tower and we have OV on board equipments that means this refers to a car and cars are have a on board unit for communication as well as data recording and they are communicating and probably the roads through roadside unit we may be communicating to the rest of the network that may be even include internet and then we say V2 to, that means vehicular to network system and then we have to manage it. Now, look at this scenario, we have a V to V network that means, from vehicle to vehicle communication we call it V to V and then V to infrastructure or V that means, a vehicle is communicating with a roadside unit. If you look at this, there is a tower here and that roadside is called roadside unit. Now, look at this scenario, there is an accident between two cars, there is a yellow car and there is a red car, orange car sorry and they are communicating, immediately this message is spread by this. Uh, uh, what you call orange car to the car following it, so that it can take a necessary measure to move from the side not coming to that lane. And similarly, the yellow vehicle can transmit its message to the vehicle green vehicle following it, so that it may change its path as well. And since the green vehicle here cannot communicate directly with the yellow vehicle, either it may be communicating through the blue or through the roadside unit. So, there is a vehicle to vehicle communication, there is a vehicle to roadside unit communication. So, this accident is an emergency situation and where the message has to be transmitted timely. And look at this scenario also, this is another scenario where uh, look at the, uh, the vehicles has uh, diverted their route. Now, uh, simply this vehicle is going, they have uh, gone to the right side of uh, the, the road and that is what is another scenario and the roadside units at times, the base is the RSU can communicate with a other kind of network we have seen here a 3G or a WiMAX, so that it can communicate with the rest of the world. Okay. Now, there are certain characteristics of a vehicular network that must be followed and that is how you will realize how the sensor network we talked yesterday are different from vehicular ad hoc network. Now, and there are similarities as well and both cases we have a decentralized mechanism, but in some in case of a uh, sensor network our sink was at the centralized place it was fixed. Here no vehicles are fixed, so totally decentralized. Decentralized means there is no one to control them and therefore they have to self uh, organize and self control. That means they must take local decisions and they must collect local data and based on this data they have to take their own decisions and nobody is there to or no other device is there to take decisions on their behalf and they have to be self organized. That means, when a vehicle joins it must send its information to the remaining that I am joining the network, I am so and so, my identity is this and the others will get this information and therefore, when a vehicle leaves and this information must be known by the others. So, they know when a vehicle is coming in, when a vehicle is going out that means, they are self organizing the network, self organized network and there have multi hop routes as I said that also was in sensor network. And the important most important factor on vehicular ad hoc network is the mobility, the speed of the nodes is high which is or which probably may not be the case for all mobile networks. So, therefore, the vehicular ad hoc network in terms of the mobility speed or the, mo the, 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 the speed of the nodes that is high speed nodes and second is the number of nodes may be large, vehicles moving on a city scenario may be large in numbers and therefore, the, the, the how does the network performs when the number of nodes are large in number that makes it more difficult and challenging. Now, 
the most important point here is the unpredictability. The movement of nodes at times is very unpredictable because there is a human element comes here. One that the driver is the one who is driving the car and probably you may have a pattern about a car in which direction it moves, but you can have cannot capture the human psychology or the driver's immediate responses at times. So, it is most unpredicted than the other kinds of ad hoc networks as well as sensor networks where the node mobility may not be that unpredictable. And the vehicle mobility is very high as I said and the density they are large in numbers and there is a geographically constrained topology. Now, in normal circumstances, the topology of a network as I said ad hoc network keeps on changing because the mobility of the nodes. Now, here the mobility of the vehicles is also being governed by the geography. That means, they can only move on the road, they cannot move outside the road. Whereas, the other cases as I gave an example of a uh, sensor network yesterday of uh, wild animals, the animal can move any, any in any direction depending on the situation that and here you cannot move outside the road. So, you have a well defined route that will only move on the road. That is what I said it is geographically constrained topology and the channel capacity also wireless limited and the node reliability is the very important factor that how much we can rely on the node. The reason being edge the moment I said the mobility of the nodes the reliability then the lot of things also depend on the driver and there is a question of the privacy and the secrecy. That means, some information probably one would not like to share with. So, that is the question of privacy. How a driver uh, moves in what he does inside the car and that probably or what a person sitting in the car is doing probably one would not like to monitor those events and, and, and disseminate them. That means, there is a question of a privacy, but at the same time there is a question of communicating and sharing information. So, therefore, the reliability that means, what I mean to say is one is they are moving therefore, there is a link break, one is this is also governed by humans and therefore, probably they may not like to share certain information at time and they may be selfish now they will not be communicating not governing therefore, the reliability of the nodes is very important in case of vehicular network network rather than other kinds of networks. And the power consumption though power consumption may not be very big issue for uh, vehicular around network because in sensor networks or ad hoc networks as I said the nodes are supplied power through batteries. Here the case is different because the vehicular ad hoc network the car's battery can supply the power and therefore, it has a no power issue at all or very but still we would also like to consume power as minimum as possible because they also consuming the power generated by the cars by consumption of petrol or diesel or any fuel that way. And that is what I put a difference here now as I said the topology of ad hoc that vehicular ad hoc network is frequently changing and rapidly changing where in normal cases it may not be the case. And how the vehicles are distributed on the road it depends on the uh, the, the geography of a road which is not the case with other networks and vehicular ad hoc networks are frequently disconnected. The reason being is either you may not have a roadside unit or the vehicles are moving fast therefore, the connectivity is broken and depending on the uh, that also de it, it depends on the density of the vehicle. So, it has a combination of V to V and V to I and therefore, probably the cost of installing or establishing such network will be may be very high because establishing roadside units all on the roads is cost T and therefore, now we have to look in how the technology evolves in the future and when it becomes feasible to have these kind of networks all around the roads. And yesterday I gave a diagram and where I uh, divide different wireless networks and there I divided ad hoc networks classified either wireless internet or wireless sensor network or vehicular ad hoc network. Now, today I have a little different classification uh, it may be used for different purpose. So, I said ad hoc networks where we may have a single hop that means, two vehicles are directly communicating we may have a multiple hop two vehicles which wants to communicate may not be within the communication range of each other. Therefore, they may take help of others. So, 
1 A is communicated to B, then B is transmitted to C, then C is transmitting into D. So, therefore, there are multiple hops. One hop means two vehicles which are within the direct communication range of each other that is called one hop. And therefore, you have multiple hops, we have single hops. If you look at single hop wireless networks and ad hoc networks, here a Bluetooth can also be an ad hoc network probably where the nodes can move in a limited distance of 10 meters so and so forth and this can be one of the, it is a single hop, there is a master and there are slave nodes which are communicating with the master. Though there is a central master is a central control, but may not be a pure ad hoc network, but could be taken a kind of small ad hoc network because the PICO, the nodes keep on moving here and there, they may join, they may go and then you have other 802.11 in IVSS mode. Then you have multiple uh, multi hop networks where you can have static and dynamic. If you look at sense and network which today yesterday we talk about, mostly they may be static, but sometimes they may be also uh, mobile. So, wireless sense and network as I said it falls under both categories as well as static and dynamic. So, it may be pure ad hoc may not be, but mesh network where you do not know what exactly topology you are using this will be a mesh network where it may be fixed infrastructure, moving infrastructure and different kind of topology. So, that will be a mesh network which may be static and vehicular ad hoc networks are pure dynamic networks. Therefore, they sometimes are called pure ad hoc network, I am repeating it. Now, there are certain issues and challenges. Now, one of the important challenge here is we need reliable communication medium access control protocol. That is the most important. Now, if the, the important point is in all kind of wireless network, we have been talking about that the MAC is important where the communication is in broadcast mode and there will be collisions if more than one node is willing to communicate. And if you remember one of the characteristics when you talked about the vehicular network is it said the density of nodes is very high. That means, in a given area the number of nodes may be large in number. Therefore, there is a high possibility that more than one vehicle or a node may be willing to communicate at the same time. If that happens, then there is a high possibility of collisions of the packets or the frames transmitted frames. If I use MacLayer, I am referring to frames and the frames may collide and then the problem is that the message is not disseminated and the frame transmission fails and the delay I said has to be low and retransmission may or definitely will increase the delay probably the message send may not be useful. Yes, in certain cases where the delay may not matter much probably this may be okay, but as warning and alert messages this cannot happen. And then the other issue is therefore, the important point is how to take care of uh, the, the collisions is one of the important issue in this. And the second case is routing and dissemination, because the topology keeps on changing and you have to send a packet faster, the routing becomes one of the important factors. Now, if you remember the packet size, one of the attempt is how to make the packet size as small as possible, because the small size packets can be delivered faster, so that the delay can be uh, reduced. And that is why we said uh, the one of the area is how to reduce or optimize the packet size therefore, the latency can be reduced and second question is how to uh, make routing algorithms which can uh, capture the topology changing topology that means, how it can model the uh, changing topology that means, even if the topology changes the message can be displayed faster. The security is another issue as I said privacy and security is very important issue that some people will not like to disseminate their information and then how to make these networks to work with the IP network, that IP configuration may be one of the important issue. Then what kind of applications we are going to run, it may be used for infotainment that means, we may be watching a movie and the transmission of movie may be important, but the low bandwidth at times may not be useful and we will not like to consume more bandwidth on infotainment rather than uh, transmitting uh, the alert and alert messages. So, there are applications if you look at and that means, one of the application is the vehicle probe, where it said travel time estimation that means, the vehicle may be transmitting an information about uh, uh, collecting an information that how much time it will take to 
reach the destination. That is what the time we may be trying to estimate. That means the vehicle is not estimating anything, but it is only trying to gather or com com compute the information that how much time it will take further to reach the destination. And it may be collecting the environmental data, the temperature, pressure at a place, and that may be decimated further or plus the vehicles, as I said, moving around and so on and so forth. And the road surface data collection is equally important. At times, I may be using vehicles to collect the road surface data, so that any point of time this information is used for the improving the road conditions and so on and so forth. These are called the probe applications where the vehicle is only trying to find out the information around. And then there are emergency vehicles that which try to uh, send the emergency message. That means any message being transmitted which may not be an emergency message must have to be preempted. That must be dropped and the emergency and the alert messages, warning messages has to be disseminated quickly so that the appropriate action can be taken that by the rest of the vehicles following or even preceding the vehicle. And it can also be used for navigation purpose. The moment I say navigation, that means we may be uh, trying to find the position of a vehicle, which if you remember a few years back, Hyderabad also has done that each vehicle will be enabled or a, a bus will be enabled with a GPS system. Therefore, it can track and the traffic control system can track where, where is a bus at the, this moment and where the bus is really uh, gone something wrong with the bus and what happened. That information may be available all the time. That is important. Now, that is what we call navigation information then infotainment that means uh, the uh, application is that we are watching a movie on sitting on the vehicle so the video transmission is equally important for in entertainment and then we may have a parking lot service where we may be knowing that what is the current status of a parking lot and that information has to be collected the vehicles which are at the park or which are nearby the park and or parking lot and they have to transmit this message to the rest of the vehicles the, about the status of a parking so that the remaining vehicles can take their appropriate action. And traffic flow from uh, electronic collection, toll collection, if you look at even the Gurgaon road, we have a lot of toll collection. Now you can see at times there is a lot of traffic waiting to have a clearance. Now that situation and the information can be disseminated by the vehicles which are at the toll collection that they can disseminate that the information to the rest of the vehicles following. If there is a bypass and the remaining vehicles at times can follow it because the delay occurred by following a, a, the route may be same as or even much less than waiting at a toll tax. So therefore, the decision has to be taken immediately. So where you are collecting uh, this toll and the traffic flow information may be collected and uh, sent to the remaining vehicles. And there may be certain remote control application, as I said, the, the buses may be controlled and where they are on the route, whether the drivers are moving correctly, timely or not, this information that there will be remote control by the traffic control system. And even not only that, I may be collecting the information about the restaurant. Say, I have to go to some restaurant, if I get some collection from the nearby cars, that what is the current status of a restaurant. Now, that means whether there is a space in the restaurant or not, if there is, then I can uh, take my action now whether I should go to that restaurant for my meal or not or I change my restaurant. If I can collect that information and vehicles can be one of the useful uh, notes because anybody who has moved the car to the restaurant, his car may be parked around and the information may be collected from the restaurant and can be disseminated to the rest of the vehicles moving towards their direction and the people can take the right decisions. And still it can also be uh, used there may be a mobile TV radio application that means uh, this information we can uh, load from uh, what you will uh, say means and right now we have a uh, uh, what you call FM radio or that you are listening on a uh, on a car. But if you have these wireless applications and then we can have other services running in the nearby radio stations which you can catch it. Now the most important in this case is the safety applications and they are important at times we may have a various kinds of safety uh, warnings, the curve is speed limit. We may not be knowing the curve is following ahead and the car which is moving ahead and it faces a curve or a U or a what you call a sharp turn and if this information is disseminated to the uh, cars following, they can take an immediate action, slow down their cars and lot of accidents can be saved. And that is pre-post crash warnings that I said, if the accident happened and that may be 
uh, the information may be uh, quickly disseminated and then I said cooperative adaptive cruise control sometimes they move in a convoy and that is very important how the speed is governed and what happens ahead. And there is a repair notification. Now, uh, if I have some thing wrong with my car and if I have certain uh, sensors on that I can collect some information and I may get information uh, that what is wrong with my car. So, there is the automatic uh, warning system or alert systems which can give me information about something going wrong with the car that may also be useful to have such applications on this and that is also comes under safety because if my brakes are going to fail if I have some little warning earlier that there is a uh, the wires are loosened and so on and so forth I can take immediate actions. And that is what we say dynamic vehicle diagnostics at times uh, uh, that is what I am saying when I move I can get the information the problem troubleshoot about this and then I can uh, communicate with the diagnostic centers or the manufacturers or the repair centers where I can get little information what action I have to take. If I have a vehicular network if my car sends me some information that something has gone wrong with your car then through networks vehicular network if I can communicate with the service centers probably I can get a immediate solution which I can take care of at that moment of time and of course the speed limit and sometimes on a highway the animals move around therefore the warning informations are very important and immediately if I have sensors like cameras on my cars I can immediately get the information and I may have automatic brake control probably my car take an action or the cars following it accordingly take an action and of course rescue assistance are as important if I have a vehicular ad hoc network probably I can communicate with uh, my vehicles when the rescue team is working on a site. And there are some of the open research areas. Uh, if you look at uh, what I have been talking, maybe useful at times. One is uh, the basic uh, MAC layer where I said A0 2.11P. Uh, we have A, B, and we have G, and then we have P, now we have N. P is a very specific protocol, MAC layer protocol designed for uh, vehicular ad hoc networks. So, if anybody is willing to work on that and they can uh, simulate it, use some uh, NS2 simulator and there is a move where the mobility can also be uh, uh, simulated by using a move simulator and then that is where the mobility model comes into picture. We have various kind of mobility models. The reason why I am focusing on the mobility model is if we know the past movement of certain vehicles that means at times if you try to look at my mobility most of the time I may be moving towards my department, my house in the campus and everybody generally we move on to office and we follow a certain road. That is the past pattern where my vehicle keeps on moving. If I have this information probably the future movement of the vehicle can be predicted based on the past history. So, if I can predict a future movement probably I can know that if at any point of time if two vehicles are communicating I can know whether there is a possibility of a vehicle coming in between or not if I see that a lot of vehicles have a pattern then I can say that at the times the vehicles will move and there may not be a disconnectivity among the vehicles. So, the communication continues and the routing protocol is other challenge which you can simulate and work on so that, uh, that uh, you can devise new protocols and one of the important focal focus point here is the routing protocols for VANET are at times little different than what you do for ad hoc network. When I am talking this one of the important factor in vehicular ad hoc network is a message delivered by a vehicle probably has to be transmitted to all the vehicles in a given area and here the vehicle is not important the vehicles in an area is important that means what we are trying to say is rather than a vehicle transmitting a message to another vehicle another car. I am trying to send a message in a given area where all vehicles will receive this information and can act. So, what I am trying to focus here is your destination your target is not a vehicle your target is an area. In generally routing what you see is a vehicle or a node it may be vehicle it may be sensor node it may be a simple laptop is transmitting its message to another vehicle or another laptop or another sensor node. Here I am saying not another one you send to a focus to a area the meaning hereby is rather than looking at how to transmit it and where to transmit it I know the direction 
and the distance of an area. And therefore, I can use that information of the direction and the distance to transmit in my message that in which direction I have to transmit the messages. So that the other nodes or the vehicles in that direction will be retransmitting the message further and remaining vehicles which are not falling in that direction will not be retransmitting. Therefore, their energy or their power can be saved that is equally important. And of course, sometimes the information has to be disseminated broadcasted as I said in a particular location say that means if a movie is being watched by the people sitting on a car probably the same movie may be watched by multiple uh, people uh, multiple uh, people sitting in different cars and the same movie is being watched. So, therefore, how to broadcast this information to the multiple uh, cars that may be important as far as information dissemination is concerned. And uh, therefore, uh, what we are trying to say is the, the when we are trying to transmit a message to a area that no, uh, that concept is called geocast routing that means, we are targeting an area rather than a node geo means geographic area. So, that is called geocasting rather than multicast or broadcast and as I said the area is important and the location the directions are important and the kind of routing which are using is called position based routing. That means, the information of the nodes or the vehicles the location information the moment I am referring to location information as yesterday I said that is I am referring to the longitudes and the long uh, latitudes of that geographic area is used to decide that which are the nodes or vehicles which will be further transmitting this message rather than knowing the identity of a vehicle the location is most important. And third area is the quality of service which is very very important. What I am trying to say is, is that if the message disseminated by the vehicles alert message or warning message does not have the proper quality probably the message for whom it is delivered and is intended to will not be understood properly and the action appropriate action cannot be taken. That means, if you are sending a message and, and if say for example, it may be transmitted either through voice or through data and generally it is a data communication and the quality of service means if the link is broken it is not timely delivered. So, delay is one of the quality parameter and how fast the message is being delivered. If I am watching movie sitting in my car if the data is not delivered in a timely manner therefore, I may not be able to stream the video and there were I may not be getting a quality of service I may not be able to continuously watch my movie then I may not be willing to watch movie in a that that means the quality of service of the movie is not good. And, and there are lot of areas and which few of which I will uh, like to discuss here is one. <coughs> one minute Okay, one minute. So, now if you look at this, if you look at this, when I said that the location information is important, what I am trying to say is if you look at diagram, diagram, what you see is there are a lot of vehicles and there is S. S means this is the vehicle which is called a source node, a small the S is at the left bottom corner which is small in size probably may not be visible is a source node which will trying to transmit it to D and at, at the right top corner. And this D means when I have the information about this D, I may have this information when D has disseminated this information to S at time T 1. Now, at time 2 T 2 when S is transmitting this message to D, now the position of D might have changed because the collected information is time T 1. Now, that means, I must know how much this d might have moved by the time from t 1 to t 2. So, if I know the velocity, then I can compute this distance and then I can draw a circle around that is the expected area where d okay. could be at this given time that is what I call expected zone. Okay, so, well friends with this part we conclude the lecture. I thank all of you for watching the lecture and on your behalf I thank Dr. D K Lobial for giving such a wonderful lecture. Thank you very much.